is a thin line between love and hate. You've crossed that line. And neither my gun nor your money will ever bring you back. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875. The Carlton Hotel. Headquarters of a man called Paladin. Hey, boy, would it be too much trouble if you helped me pack this suitcase? Oh, oh, so sorry, Mr. Paladin. Uh, morning paper have very interesting news items. What time did you say the train leaves? 10.30. It's 40 minutes. We better hurry. Dakota Territory, big place, bigger San Francisco? Uh, much bigger in size, but maybe not as many people. Oh, news item in paper say San Francisco have 190,000 people. Hee! <laughs> no wonder omnibus so crowded each morning when Hey Boy come to work. Now, uh, let's see. Sure. Another item say we soon have omnibus without horses. How are they going to pull omnibus without horses, Mr. Paladin? By cable. Oh. They've already proved that it can be done. Cable? How? Oh, some way they put the cable underground. They're called cable cars. Oh, I think best maybe I ride omnibus with horses. Uh, maybe cable break. Uh, we'll see. Who is this Holly Ballon you go to see in Dakota Territory? I've never met her, but according to the letter I got from her, she should be a very interesting woman. Oh, how so? She's offering me $2,000. Yee! What does she want you to do for that much money? I don't know yet, but I think it'll be worth the trip just to find out. There. You ready to go? Oh, yes, sir. Carriage will be waiting for you. And uh, thanks for helping me pack, hey, boy. Pack? Oh, oh, yes, sir. Always happy to be of service, Mr. Paladin. Everywhere you go, across the country trip or across the street party, you carry the fun with you when you own a Columbia stereophonic high-fidelity phonograph. There's a marvelous selection of seven new portable models in smart new color combinations at your Columbia Phonograph dealer from which you may choose. Each one is a masterpiece of design and beauty. More quality, more features, and more styling have been built into these sturdy portables than ever before. How much fun you'll have enjoying all the wonderful new sound of stereo records. Regular records take on new beauty, too, when played on handsome Columbia portables. You'll be amazed at the big console sound that is reproduced by Columbia Portable Stereophonic High Fidelity Phonographs. You'll thrill to the excitement of Stereo One by Columbia, number one in the wonderful world of sound. And Columbia Portables are economical, too. Prices start as low as $24.95. See them and hear them at your Columbia Phonograph dealer. <laughs> Cheyenne Deadwood stage took me to the Black Hills, a proud island of mountains rising out of the rugged plains in Dakota Territory. Slim ponderosa pines covered the slopes, their tips piercing the sky. And at their base, grizzled miners stooped over sluice boxes, straightened their backs and waved their hats as we rode up the gulch to Deadwood City. When we arrived, I registered at the Grand Central Hotel. The desk clerk told me that I would find Holly Bannon at the Redbird Saloon. It was early evening when I walked into the saloon, but from the looks of the lager beer glasses crowding the bar, it was going to be a big night. When I told the barkeep I was looking for Holly Bannon, he pointed to a lavishly dressed woman who was sitting at a table alone. I joined her. Glad you could come, Paladin. Well, your letter aroused my curiosity. Funny how you picture a person in your mind before you see them. They're always different. I've had the same experience. You're disappointed this time, aren't you? Hmm? What makes you think that? Your eyes tell me. They're warm, but not for me. Don't always judge a man by the look in his eyes, Miss Bannon. Holly, call me Holly. If I knew more about you, maybe you'd find a, a different look. There's not much to know. I'm a dealer at the faro table every night. You can always find me here or in my hotel room. Or shopping for expensive clothes. Dealers make good money at the Redbird. Uh, that answers one of my questions. Oh, what's that? How you could afford to pay me $2,000. Now, what's the answer to the other question? What, the reason I hired you? Yeah. 
Uh, Paladin, there's a man coming over to our table. I don't want anyone to know why you're here. I thought you were going to be waiting for me alone, Holly. Why, Doss, I didn't know you were coming in tonight. You forgot. I told you last night I was going to be here. Why are you drinking with this man? Well, where's your manners, Doss? No harm in having a drink with a handsome gentleman who just arrived in I'll town. buy your drinks for you. Now move on, mister. There's other ladies here that ain't spoke for it. I'm not interested in other ladies at the moment. Don't be so jealous, Doss. You were just having a friendly chat. Your friendly chat is over, Mr. <laughs> you talk like you think you're a big man, Doss. <laughs> Miss Bannon and I were having a private talk, and we're going to finish it. There won't be any need to, Mr. <laughs> Doss! You're as good as they say you are, Paladin. Seems like I contacted the right man. I think we better forget about our business deal, Miss Bannon. Why? Because of what happened just now. You were the cause of this fight. I don't know what you mean. Then I don't think I should bother explaining it to you. Mr. Paladin, wait. I did cause the fight. I'm sorry. It's just that Doss is so jealous, and I can't help but tease him about it. Please don't leave. I brought you here to help me, and I need you. Real bad. For what? To save my life. Why do you think your life is in danger? Walk with me to the hotel. We can talk there. Someone may hear us standing out here. All right. Who is this? This Doss... I met him in Belforge last month. I worked up there for a week. They were expecting a lot of cowboys from the Texas Trail. He was one of them. Took a fancy to me and followed me back to Deadwood. Says he's going to stay through the winter. He's got gold fever. And the holly fever? Huh? Oh. Yes. I suppose you could call it that. You don't think much of him, do you? Why would you say that? You left him lying on the floor back there. Oh. Doss can take care of himself. Besides, I had to stop you from leaving. Miss Bennett? What happened? I must have caught my shoe on that step. Are you hurt? My, my ankle feels twisted. Do you think you can stand up? I don't know. I'll try. Oh, here. Here, let me help oh. you. Oh. Oh, thank you. Oh. Oh. I can't put any weight on that foot. Maybe I better carry you to the hotel. Yes. I think you'd better. Right. Oh. There. I hope it isn't broken. Do you think it might be? Could happen that way. How does it feel? <laughs> broken. Oh, you've got big arms, Paladin. I like men with big arms. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should because There's filter blend up front Up front ahead of the filter And the flavor you get in a Winston cigarette comes from filter blend Filter blend means fine tobacco Filter blend up front And the flavor you get in a Winston cigarette comes from filter blend Filter blend is a mighty good reason for you to smoke Winston Because it means tobacco specially processed for filter smoking A Winston secret you get Winston's own pure white modern filter, plus the rich, delightful flavor of fine tobacco. There's filter blend up front, up front ahead of the filter, and the fun you get in a Winston cigarette comes from filter blend, and makes Winston taste good like a cigarette should. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. carried Holly to her room. It was on the second floor of the same hotel where I was staying. I bandaged her ankle and we decided it was not broken, just a bad sprain. 
She made herself comfortable on the bed. Why don't you pour us a drink, Paladin? Yeah, I could use one. You'll have to stay off that ankle for a couple of days. You should be safe here in your room. I'm glad you're concerned about me. Somehow you don't act like a girl whose life is in danger. I don't feel that it has been since you've been around. Here. Thank you. Now, you want to tell me about it? Yes. My husband, or rather the man who used to be my husband, has threatened to kill me. His name's Jed Bannon. I want you to kill him. Why would he want to kill you? He's crazy. Crazy as a loco weed. I left him three months ago, and he's been begging me to come back to him ever since. I won't. He knows it. He's, he's terribly jealous. He comes into town every now and then. He gets drunk. He tried to shoot me four different times. Have you told the sheriff? There's a sheriff in this town. I don't know it. Now, how does your friend Doss feel about this? Oh, Doss doesn't know about it. He couldn't help me anyway. All he knows how to do is fight with his fists. I doubt if Doss would know how to use a gun. Why don't you leave town? Why should I do that? I make money here. Lots of money. They use gold dust for chips in this town, Paladin. These fingernails scrape up more gold in a week than most of those miners do in a month. Enough gold to afford to pay you $2,000 to kill my husband. I'm afraid I'll have to turn your offer down. How much more money do you want? It isn't the money. I don't go around shooting men just because their wives want to get rid of them. But he's been trying to kill me. I don't think you've been telling me the truth. Why? Why wouldn't I be? That's a terrible thing to say. You are lying to me. Miss Bannon, you get someone else to do your killing. You... You... You could cut somebody that way. Paladin! What's that? Paladin, are you hurt? No. No. No, I dropped to the floor so he'd think I was hit. Jeb. That's who it was. It was Jeb. He thought it was me coming out that door. It's more likely your friend, Doss. Doss doesn't carry a gun. It was Jeb Bannon. You see, that's proof. I wasn't lying. Whoever it was, I'll find him. Holly told me that Jed Bannon lived on a small ranch about three miles north of Deadwood. I knew I'd have to look him up just to make sure he wasn't the one who tried to kill me. She warned me that he was a smooth talker and a very dangerous man. She also warned me many times over that I should shoot him on sight before he had a chance to get me. The next morning, I took a ride out to his place. Ooh. Ooh. Howdy. You, Jed Bannon? Yeah, that's right. What can I do for you, mister? I want to talk to you about Holly. Come on in the house. We'll brew up some coffee. Uh, no need for you to do that. We can talk out here. I was just going to take some time out for coffee anyway. You might as well join me. All right. I've been cutting firewood since daybreak. It's mighty tiresome after a while. What's your name? Paladin. You live in Deadwood? No. Come on in. Just make yourself to home. Take a chair at the table if you like. Thanks. It looks like the coffee's still hot enough. My wife wrote over to the neighbors. She'll be disappointed she didn't get to see you. Always likes to visit with new folks. Your wife? Yeah. Holly didn't tell me you were married again. Oh, yeah. After we got unhitched, I married the sweetest little woman you could ever meet. There you are. Indian girl. Real pretty, too. Were you in town last night? Nope. I haven't anything left in Deadwood. I only go there when I have to pick up vittles. But never after sundown. Someone tried to kill me last night. Holly says it was you. Figures. And she sent you out here to kill me. Says you've been threatening her life. You're not the first man she's told that to. She won't be happy till I'm dead. You must have hurt her real bad. Uh, not on purpose. 
Oh, I blame myself in many ways. But what's done is done. See, Holly and I knew each other years ago back in Illinois. We wanted to get married, but there was one thing held us back. She'd already been promised to someone else, and he wouldn't give her up. She said the only chance we had to ever to be together was to run away. So we did. And came out here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Later on, she told me she'd killed her fiancé. Said she'd done it for me to prove how much she loved me. Just so we could be together. And that started a sore in our marriage that well, just never healed. She didn't have to kill him. Finally, I left her and She's been trying to get back at me ever since. Why would you tell this to me? Oh, I don't know. You look like you might have an interest in Holly. If you did, you, you might be able to help her. I don't think anyone will ever be able to do that, Mr. Bannon. Improved case, I tune up the tune up in a can. Morning, sir. Help you? I hope so. Engine, huh? Hasn't got the pickup of a kitty car. Well, it's misfiring some. Some? Mister, half my plugs are on strike. Improved case, I tune up the tune up in a can. Yeah, probably your rings are sticking, maybe your valves. Uh, when was that carburetor cleaned? <laughs> Not too recently. Improved case side tune-up, the tune-up in a can. <laughs> Your car's not in such bad shape, all you need's a tune-up. A tune-up? A $50 tune-up? Now, relax. We'll add a can of case side tune-up to your gasoline, another can to your oil. That'll clean your whole firing zone. Valves, rings, plugs, carburetor, everything. Mister, you're pouring it on. No, no, you pour it in. Dollar and a quarter a can at most any service station. Results guaranteed or double your money back. Improved case side tune-up, the tune-up in a can. It was a slow ride back to Deadwood. I took the horse I had rented to the livery stable and walked over to the hotel. Holly was in her room, sitting up in the bed, nursing her sprained ankle. You killed him, didn't you? No. Why not? He wasn't the man who was in the hall last night. You let him smooth talk you right out of it, didn't you? No, Holly, Jed doesn't bother with smooth talk. Did you see that Indian woman he's keeping out there? It was Doss who shot at me last night. I almost believed you, Holly, when you said that he didn't know how to use a gun. But there never was a cowpuncher yet who came up with a trail herd who didn't know how to handle a gun. He never wears one. That doesn't mean he wouldn't. Doss! I followed your boyfriend up here from the livery stable. What do you mean, bursting into my room like this? I... I see you're wearing guns today, Doss. You're seeing real good. I don't want any shooting in my room. Won't hurt your room, Holly. Everything else has gone on in here between you two. We might as well add a few gunshots. You were pretty free with your gun last night outside that door. My aim is a lot better today. When you drop to the floor this time, it's going to be for good. You think we've been lovebirding it, don't you, Doss? Well, you're wrong. I, I don't think you're away anymore, Holly. But it doesn't matter about him and you one way or the other. Come to find out last night after our little fight that you've been sorting with a few other fellas around Deadwood. So I can settle two marks today, one for the sorting and one for the fight. You, you're not going to kill me, Doss. Him, maybe, but not me. You too, Holly. <laughs> Holly. Holly. Oh. Oh, it burns. Can you... Stop the burning. I'll get a doctor. No. No, don't leave me alone. Please, don't leave me alone. Powder, are you all right? Yes. Is he dead? Yes, he's dead. Oh, you killed the wrong man. I wanted you to kill Jed. Doss was all right. He'd get jealous, but he didn't mean anything to me. Jed's the only man I ever cared about. 
I loved him so much, I even killed a man for him. And he... He left me. He left me. Oh, Jed. Jed. Good morning, Mr. Pallady. Hello, hey boy. Come in. Oh, Miss Wong says she see you arrive this morning. You have a nice trip? No. Oh, too bad. Uh, hey, uh, you collect uh, $2,000? No, I didn't. Oh. Oh, Mr. Pallady, you shouldn't feel bad. We'll make much money on other trip. No, the money didn't matter. Hey, this uh, Holly Bannon you go to see. Nice lady? Well, I think she must have been at one time. But she filled her heart with too much love for one man. Oh, can be very bad. Yeah. It destroyed her. Oh, very bad. Uh, it's almost time for lunch. Uh, you want food brought to room? No, no, I think I'll go down to the dining room. Oh, he's a very good idea. Interesting young lady registered at hotel while you were away. Uh, maybe she'd be there, too. Oh, how... How interesting is this young lady, hey, boy? Oh, you see, you see... Who? Hey, boy, leave now. Go down to reserve Misa Pallet in good table. <laughs> now, nah, not too close, hey, boy. I've been away a long time. Have gun, will travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hey Boy. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun, Will Travel by Mr. Paris. Featured in the cast were Virginia Gregg, Richard Perkins, and Jack Moyles. Tomorrow, KMOX Radio, the voice of St. Louis, will be speaking from a new home, the nation's most modern radio studios. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel. Thank you.